Man, I don't think my aspect ratio has ever been this big. Hello all my happy viewers. So it seems as of lately, it's been a great time to be a kaiju fan. From Godzilla Kong the New Empire, Monarch on Apple TV, to Minus One even winning an Oscar. Godzilla. <laughs> even smaller things like Godzilla and Ultraman crossing paths in the popular game Gigabash. It's a good time to be a kaiju fan right now. No, 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 not, not, not you. And soon, the release of the Netflix film, Ultraman Rising. I've been looking forward to this movie for a very long time, ever since they first announced it, and it looks very promising. Maybe it'll spark a new interest in the Ultra franchise in Western audiences. And because of this new film, I started to go back and look at some of my favorite Ultra shows, including the subject of today's video, Ultraman Neos. Of all the Ultra shows, I see people talking about this one the least. Hell, even Ultraman Nice got a couple of videos talking about him. But Neos is a special case. Many producers in the 90s thought the Ultraman franchise was dead in the water. Just two years prior, Tsuburaya had released a new tokusatsu series unrelated to the Ultra franchise, Gridman. And while the series had seen moderate success and even gained enough attention for an American adaptation, the show didn't grab enough interest for a larger audience, and its planned sequel series was ultimately cancelled. Though, that's not what did Neos in. No, sir. Ultraman Towards the Future was a series made in Australia, meant to spread the hype behind the Ultra series further than just Asia. The series ultimately did not do the franchise any favors. <laughs> Ultraman The Ultimate Hero was a series filmed for American audiences that ultimately went unaired in America. These three factors made broadcasting networks in Japan scared to even air an Ultraman series. However, in 1995, Super Eye had gained a little bit of debt due to Gridman. So, they used what they had. The Tokyo Broadcasting Network allowed them to air both Towards the Future and Ultimate Hero on TV. And surprisingly, it worked! These two shows gained enough traction and interest the Ultra series had sparked anew. Tsuburaya knew that they had to strike while the iron was still hot. They decided to make a new Ultraman show that was a back to basics series, and to see if people were interested, a short pilot was filmed in 1995, featuring the titular Ultraman Neos and newcomer Ultra 721. Or 21, whichever you want to say, but they say 2-1 in the series. Tsuburaya hoped that there would be enough interest that the show would be picked up by a television network, but unfortunately... <laughs> Networks were ultimately unpleased, saying the series was unoriginal, claiming it was just not different enough from past shows of the franchise. This was seen as a massive blow to Tsukusatsu, as the mid-90s saw a decline in interest. Godzilla was dead, Metal Heroes was declining in views, Super Sentai's viewership was in the toilet, and Kamen Rider television shows were on a hiatus. Thankfully, Tsuburaya was not giving up yet, and in 1996, a new spark in the Ultra franchise was released. Ultraman Tiga was released and became a massive hit. Thanks to the show, the hits just kept coming in. Tiga, Dyna, Gaia, they were all massive hits in Japan. To increase financial income, Tsuburaya dipped their toes in the market of direct-to-home video releases. Between the release of Ultraman Gaia and their next upcoming television show, Tsuburaya had to fill the gap with something. And thus, Naos was finally being made. Ultraman Naos as a show had a very basic but easy to follow plot. Earth is entering what's called the Unbalanced Zone, which is covering the planet in dark matter, giving rise to Kaiju. The Unbalanced Zone has been referenced before, most notably in the Ultra franchise's first series, Ultra Q. The series follows the young and optimistic Kagura, who, due to an accident in space, is rescued by Ultraman Zofi, who just kind of pushes this responsibility on him if we're being honest. Hey kid, wanna be a giant superhero? I- The eyes have it. So now Kagura and Neos fight Kaiju alongside Earth's defense team, Heart. Seem hard to follow? Well don't worry, this series is only 12 episodes long. Yeah, a lower budget means a shorter series. If anything, the show has a few episodes very similar to the original Ultraman series. Some standout episodes involve a monster that is actually a colony of fish that form at one giant monster. Another has a giant dinosaur created by children. <laughs> this one is tonally comedic compared to the rest of the series, and I, I really don't know why. <laughs> Another episode is very similar to the original Ultraman's Lawless Monster Zone episode. A man is stranded on an island and is alive thanks in part to- WHAT THE FUCK IS THAT?! <laughs> Nightmare fuel aside, this monster named Bamo serves as the show's equivalent to Pigmon, a small, seemingly child-friendly monster. But by far my favorite episode in the series is the one that introduces a reoccurring race in the series, the Alien Zamu. See, unlike other alien races in the franchise, the Zamu are normally peaceful. When Hart comes across them, the aliens simply defend themselves non-lethally. The leader of this crew experiments with the dark matter surrounding the Earth, trying to see if he can get rid of it by using it to evolve their kind. 
He asks Kagura, should things go wrong, to please kill him. That's a lot of trust he gives and is a very heavy theme. I won't go too much into spoilers, but it's because of this one Zamu that the race is reoccurring in the show. And in case you hadn't noticed, the Zamu were basically made as a combination of both the Baltans and Zeton in terms of design. The series had a very small following, but it was just enough to give Tsuburaya some more revenue for the next show, Ultraman Cosmos, even though Neos wasn't aired on TV. But as we'd see, that was subject to change. In the middle of Cosmos' run, the main character's actor was caught in some legal trouble, of which now we know was later proven innocent, but during this time Cosmos had stopped filming, and the show was pulled from the air. What was Tsuburaya going to do? Well, there was only one thing that they could do. No, no, they aired Neos in Cosmos' time slot. And due to this change in shows, Neos saw a massive increase in fans across Japan. His following skyrocketed, and soon, Neos had become the newest face of Tsuburaya. Due to an ongoing legal battle with Chayo, that's an entirely different can of worms. Yeah! Neos was used for advertising for the Ultra franchise as he was recognizable enough as Ultraman, though not too close enough to the original that Chayo yeah! could claim ownership of him. Neos was everywhere, from music videos, to stage shows, to even state farm commercials. Ultraman! Hi, Jonathan! Yeah! Neos had become the face of the Ultraman franchise across Southeast Asia. That is, until Ultraman Reboot eventually took his place. If you followed my channel for a long time, or you go back and watch some of our older videos, you'll see that I actually have a bit of a connection to Ultraman Nails. He was going to be one of the main characters on a little show me and my cousin created that ultimately got canned. What do you think he's dreaming about? At that time, I was able to find clips of the series online, and I actually really liked what I saw. And now, thanks to the legal battle with Chayo yeah. finally being over, I was finally able to watch the series on DVD in its entirety. I may have binge-watched the series three times already. This series, I suppose, wasn't seen as big importance as other Ultraman shows by Mill Creek, so for right now, it doesn't have a Blu-ray set, just a DVD one. Unlike other Ultraman sets, however, this one is just two discs. Like I said earlier, the series only has 12 episodes, and if you ask me, that makes it a good starter show if you're just now getting into the Ultraman franchise. Now, there are some downsides in this series, I won't lie. One being the lack of budget. Yeah, let's acknowledge the elephant in the room here. This show's lack of budget is very much apparent in many aspects. One of the biggest is being the headquarters of Hart. Sure, Hart themselves are a high-tech attack team, but their base is just so empty and lifeless. Anytime a character walks in a main hall or a lobby, it's just them. There's nobody there. There's no source on where this was filmed, but knowing the Heisei Ultra shows, it was likely filmed in an office building or a convention center. It's a lack of budget, sure, but it's not ultra fight low. Another low is that while Kagura is a likable character, I can't fully say the same for the rest of Heart. There are a few episodes where they get a chance to shine, but they're all pretty bland. <laughs> if I wanted something this tasteless, I'd just order pizza from Little Caesars. <laughs> Neos, in terms of design, falls into a category that I like to call the original, but not. But it's an interesting design choice, as he was supposed to be considered the Ultraman of the new century, something that is even stated in-universe. Call me basic, but I like the designs that are meant to look like the original Ultraman. It's nostalgic and recognizable, even though Tiga and Mabius are still tied for my favorite Ultra designs overall. As for 721, he's called the hero of the 21st century, but as a character... He's just as bland as the rest of Hart. There's nothing so stand out about him, other than he's just Neos' equal. That and he's a newer Ultra 7. He acts more as a spy, only helping Neos out in monster fights during dire situations. He also seems to be more wise, giving Kagura advice when he needs it. Do I think everybody would like Ultraman Neos? Probably not. Do I think it's amazing by any means? Not really. Do I still think you should check it out? Absolutely. Am I a little biased? Probably. But if you're looking to get into the Ultraman franchise and you don't know where to start, and you don't have a lot of time to binge watch these 40 to 50 episode shows, then Neos is the perfect start for you. It being only 12 episodes means you can check it out in just a couple of days. Or a whole day if you're built different. With that said, I'm very much looking forward to Ultraman Rising and seeing where else the series goes from here. Hopefully we get new adaptations, new twists, and new classics. With that said, stay fantastic, happy viewers.